Okay, is it working? Okay. Hi, my name is Brooke. I'm a grateful Christian in recovery from codependency, and today I choose recovery. Hi. 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 I would like to open with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, help me to be your vessel today. Help me to do and share the story and the work that you have done in me, and help me to become the person I am today and the person in progress that I so I can continue to work and be the person that you would want me to be. Help me, help my words touch the people they need to touch, Lord, and just help me to um, just say what you would have me to say, Lord, today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I was born February 20th, 1984 in Burlington, Wisconsin. I was two and a half months early and suffered a birth injury resulting in a diagnosis of cerebral palsy shortly after my birth. The diagnosis caused a lot of issues growing up for me both emotionally and physically. I was in and out of the hospital a lot as a child, including numerous surgeries and therapy throughout my childhood. I was late in my development and was largely seen as an outcast by my peers due to my physical limitations. I had difficulty relating to others, including my family. I was treated as inferior and frequently referred to as the crippled one by both relatives and peers alike. I resigned myself to being unworthy of others' attention because I was not good enough. This is when my codependency came into existence. I would frequently try to do anything to be what others wanted me to be. I thought the most important thing was to be loved by others, and in order to do that, I had to be like others. I made myself a blank slate, devoid of any uniqueness. I was a robot. I went to school, followed the rules, and did everything that was expected of me without complaint. But even though I tried to, do, tried to be the same as everyone else, I could never achieve it. Try as I may, I could not hide my physical limitations and grew to resent them. I blamed my physical limitations as the reason I was unable to have any real relationships. I did not know God or have any relationship with him growing up. The only time we went to church growing up was for a wedding or a funeral. The little bit I knew of God from others, I imagined him being a big presence with a scoreboard of wrong and right points. I figured as long as the good outweighed the bad, I was in good shape. Living without a meaningful relationship with my Savior, along with the crippling isolation, made for a very lonely childhood. I was good at putting on the mask and pretending to be happy, but inside I was a broken, scared little girl just needing someone to love her. As I grew older, I isolated myself more and more to protect myself from any possibility of being hurt by others. When I was 18, I decided to go away to college and start fresh away from everyone and everything I knew. I thought if I changed my surroundings, it would somehow make my issues go away. Unfortunately, this was not the case. I just carried all of my emotional baggage with me. Shortly after arriving to college, I met my very first boyfriend. I was so shocked that everyone would be willing to that anyone would be willing to date someone who was as different as me. I was determined to make this relationship work as I was sure that this was the only opportunity that would present itself, or only opportunity and would not present itself again. I yet again became a blank slate. I did everything I could to make him happy. I liked everything he liked, did everything he did. I went through the motions telling myself I was happy and that this is what I wanted. So much so that when my boyfriend came home to our apartment that we shared and told me we were getting married because he had joined the military, I went along with the plan, choosing to overlook the fact that one of the most important decisions in my life was made for me and not by me. After a complicated basic, after he completed basic training, we ended up in Colorado It was there that I was invited to church and was saved and attempted for the first time to grow my relationship with God during my husband's first deployment overseas. For the first time, I experienced a real God, 
one that was one that loved me unconditionally with a love that didn't that I didn't have to earn for someone who spent my whole life up to that point paying for others love by sacrificing my own self-worth and respect this seemed like a foreign concept could love really be given for free without expectation my answer was in his word God loved me first before I even know he existed. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While my husband was gone on that first deployment, I immersed myself in learning as much as I could about God and my relationship with him. I attended church regularly and read my Bible daily. I was curious about God, but still wondered if he truly loved me just as I am. After all, if I was not good enough for others to love me up to this point, how would God be any different? I based God's value of me in the same way people in my life had. My perception of God was largely off kilter and based on my worldly perception of value rather than a spiritual value. I found it very hard to believe that someone would be so willing to love someone so defective as I was led to believe I was. When my husband returned from deployment, he did not like the changes I had made in my life. While he was gone, including volunteering at the church and my new relationship with friends at church, he argued that attending church hindered our time together and was damaging our relationship. I did not like having to give up this new aspect of my life, but being as I was still largely codependent and felt I had no other choice in order to keep my only relationship I could ever hope to have, or so I thought at the time, I gave up the volunteer work and eventually the progress I had made in growing my relationship with God waned even though I was attending church regularly every week. We, conti we continued our marriage and eventually had a son. We moved to Alaska after my second husband's, or my, my husband's second deployment overseas. Due to my extreme codependency and lack of self-confidence, I agreed yet again to put my husband before myself and followed him to a voluntary reassignment to Alaska, knowing the extreme cold there would cause physical issues for me. I had expressed my concerns with my husband at the time, but I was overruled and decided to move anyway in an attempt to keep my family together. By Christmas 2010, I was undergoing Botox and electrical stimulation in my legs every three months in order to move, along with trying to take care of our son every day while my husband was at work. I worked through the pain and tried to continue to move to prove my worth as a good mother and wife. But in the end, it didn't last. The pressure I had put on myself physically and mentally had taken its toll. The husband I had worked so hard to keep left me and our two-year-old two son. He said he could no longer be married to a cripple anymore. This event in and of itself turned my world upside down. The careful and delicate life I had tried to keep together was an illusion with an illusion of control fell apart i tried to control everything by being something i was not and putting unrealistic expectations on myself after he left i was forced to sell everything and move to florida for a fresh start with my son my relatively new relationship with god was virtually non-existent i blamed myself for not being good enough to keep my marriage together I figured God was probably mad at me, too, because I was not able to stop the divorce. I found Grace Church one year after moving to Florida and became a member in September 2012. Shortly after I became a member, I started to work for the church in the nursery department, teaching Sunday school to preschoolers. Even though I was in church regularly and even worked for the church, I knew something was still wrong. I would often work Friday nights and would see all the families and changes that would slowly happen 
to people who regularly attended the recovery meetings. During this time, I was enduring legal, constant legal issues with my ex-husband, and I was trying to hold four jobs and be a single mom. I was tired, and I was completely, honestly hopeless. I needed something more. My boss at the time suggested I started, start attending the recovery meetings on Friday nights. I was skeptical about this because my naive self thought the recovery was not for me. I never have never done any drugs in my life. Recovery is for those people <laughs> with drug issues. I found out just how wrong I was. I came in my first meeting and sat in the back. I was embarrassed because I did not want anyone to recognize me or judge me for being there simply because I worked for the church. I made it through a large group feeling anxious and wanting to run away or at the very least hide somewhere. When I stepped into CR 101 after the meeting, I learned the meaning of codependency. It was like a light bulb went off in my head. This is what I was stuck on, and, why, and on, this is why I was miserable, even though I had a relationship with God. I started to realize the depth of my codependency and the, fact it, and the effect it was having in my life. I decided to make a change. I chose recovery. At first, I was scared to talk to anyone. I took a full month before, it took a full month before I was able to do anything but cry in small group meetings. Yeah, I was one of those that just bawled like crazy. It was, yeah. I was not sure what I was supposed to say. Finally, I got up the courage to start sharing in group. The more I came regularly, the more I felt the urge to dive deeper, which I promptly ignored. Too terrified to where it would lead. It took me a year to be able to get up the nerve to get a sponsor. Asking someone to be my sponsor was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. Oh, goodness, that was scary. I don't want to have to do that again. Um, for the first time in my life, I felt except, er, oh, wait, 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 I missed my spot here. Um, as God started to reveal to me who I was and and as I became closer to him, being around other people was not as scary anymore. For the first time in my life, I felt accepted for who I was in the moment, even if I didn't know who, it was in, who I was in the moment. I joined a step study, and it was during that time I really got to know myself for the first time in my life. For the first time, I was able to ground my identity in Christ, not in others or in what I believe others wanted me to be. Romans 12, 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. This gave me freedom beyond anything I had ever experienced. No longer did I need to identify my worth in what others thought of me, but in Christ alone. This allowed me to no longer resent my disability, but to embrace it, including starting a new career in the medical field to help those with physical ailments overcome obstacles, just as God has taught me to do. God also allowed me to realize the emotional and mental abuse I suffered throughout my marriage and with members of my family. With the help of thoughtful prayer and guidance from the Holy Spirit, the 12 steps, accountability partners, and my sponsor, I was able to evaluate and set boundaries with relationships in order to regain my sanity and release control in situations where in fact I did not have control. Through my recovery, I, am, I have also come out of my shell. Before recovery, I was scared to talk to anyone. I wouldn't be up here. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Okay. Now, nearly five years later, it'll be five years, October 30th. <laughs> By the grace of God, I am a leader in the Children's Ministry for Peace School. 
the preschoolers, a member of the Global and Cape Coral CR team, and a leader, of my, and a leader in my codependency small group. With each step I took out of my comfort zone, I continued in continuing my recovery journey. God has been there every step of the way. Working the steps was and, and is at times, and at times continues to be one of the most difficult things I have ever done. But the freedom I experienced after I have given up control in Jesus is ab given up control to Jesus is it is absolutely amazing, and I would not give it up for anything. I still struggle and can with control and releasing it to Jesus daily. In my recovery journey, I have learned that the recovery, that recovery is a lifestyle change and not a quick fix. God is constantly showing me new obstacles in my life that I need to tackle. I now know that God, with God, anything is possible and through every hardship I have faced, God has been with me and will continue to be with me through each one in the future. Recovery is a daily choice I make when I choose to continue my journey with God. God as my guide. I will continue to make this choice so that others may know the love and relationship with, one, with the one true God and follow his ways. I praise him and thank him every day for the glorious gift of his love and relationship with him. Throughout my almost five-year recovery journey, God has consistently showed me that I no longer need to rely on my strength and feeble attempts to control things, but on God who, who accepts me in spite of my own crazy, codependent, hamster wheel thought patterns. <laughs> he, only, he not only meets me where I am, but con consistently uses my brokenness and flaws to pour out his love for others through me. I am forever grateful to be his vessel. I am grateful to be able to serve him, be it in a foreign country on my first ever mission trip, um, leading small groups, being a listening ear to a patient who is lonely, or wiping a nose of a preschooler as I teach Sunday school. Nothing is too big or too small for my God. I find my peace in serving him. 1 John 5.20 says, And we know that God, the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God because he, we live in fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is eternal life. The recovery lifestyle has not been easy, but with God's help, I have been able to have healthy relationships by examining my own motives in, when making decisions and place my decisions on the, what will give God glory and not, will, not what will make people around me happy. I know God will always lead me on the right path if I continually lead, follow his lead and give up the illusion of control. I pray someday all of you can feel the peace that only comes from the true relationship with God. Thank you for listening. Thank you.